All right, guys, welcome back to another comic book haul and review for New Comic Book Day. We've got a stack of comic books here. We're going to jump into it, and some exciting things happened this week. We've got some first appearances, we've got some weird stuff, and we got some stuff that's just kind of, well, it's just not that good. Let's start breaking it down with DC. We're going to jump into Absolute Power. DC's event is is this is great. This is why I like reading comic books because what they're doing between this and the absolute universe that's about to pop off, you kind of get the conclusion here. Uh, what happens to Amanda Waller? Uh, the very worst thing you can do to her, take her secrets away from her. They kind of mind wipe her, right? Yeah, it's a little woo woo ish. Seemed a little quick to the end. Uh, but epic battle, great action scenes in it, great dialogue about pushing through a problem to accomplish a goal. I'm always on board for that kind of story. Um, but it's kind of unique how this kind of transcribed into our next book this week, which is All In Special. So this kind of was weird because it does the whole uh, the flip thing where you read one story and then you read the other. If I had to do a recommendation, I would do the earlier story and then the later story, not the other way around. How can you tell? It tells you right there on the first page. Yeah, so um, what do we get in here? We get the launch of the Absolute Universe. A new universe, a new world, or however you want to pop it off, is in existence now. And it's all thanks to our guy and my favorite villain in the DC Universe, Darkseid. Love that character. Always loved him ever since Dark Side is, was a statement in one of the, the crisis. You know, to kind of set him apart as something different or bigger than the actual world in DC itself. And they really honed in on that in this story. Even mentioning his role in other crises that have happened throughout DC history. And kind of melting it all together to give you an explanation of just how powerful Dark Side is. We get a great look at this. We get a little, for all you D, or I'm sorry, Justice League Unlimited fans out there, you get a quick, oh, I remember that from that cartoon thing. If that was something you watched. Um, powers have been kind of swapped around a little bit, too, because of the previous story. It explained why it happened there, and then launches it into here. So some heroes got different powers. Uh, we got a lot of new superhero teams, and then we got the whole absolute universe and why batman's logo on his chest looks different now it makes sense when you read this book so definitely you may want to check that out moving on plastic man no more time so this is going to be a heartbreaking story here done in kitty art type fashion with some adult language in it and some adult themes in it like you know killing somebody for the greater good that's that's a rough decision out there and it kind of goes over that in here. So Plastic Man needs to set off a nuclear explosion, not only to save himself, but to save his estranged son, mostly because he was a douchebag back in the day. So for them to kind of figure all this out, they have to find some uranium or something that can set off a nuclear explosion. What better person than uh, Metal Men? You may vaguely remember them. They've been kind of in and out of the comic book story realm for a while. But Uranium Man is made from uranium, and that's what you need to kind of set off a nuclear bomb. But unfortunately, he enlists the help of Metal Man to help save Uranium Man so he can use him, but ultimately ends up killing all the Metal Men by smelting them. Something I do in the evil layer quite a bit. So yeah, that, that was something else. Technically they all morph together if it was hot enough we may end up with a new character i'm not speculating or anything but that would be kind of a cool thing to do you know like i don't know nordic gold man be a viking that'd be cool i don't know let's see where that lands us i'm on board with that it's a great read check it out uh something i found a little interesting is this um creature commandos that kind of came out now i am a fan of Frankenstein in the DC universe. I love creature commandos. I love those kind of war stories. I love weird eclectic type characters. But this actually kind of missed for me because it seemed that our vampire character in here, who's a new character, it's not the original, is more socially aware or more of a, uh, I don't know how to put it. Let's just say the worst aspects of a younger generation. 
we all have the worst aspects of us but it's like those are kind of the home den ones and then kind of the social justice warrior type for the wolverine type character and i don't know they they're doing that snarky thing i do know i just lied to you that they're doing the snarky they're making the characters snarky and then their mission has to be kind of patriotic and then you put a douchebag in charge of them and how does that ultimately turn out? And Frankenstein is kind of unintelligent in this. The big lovable goof, if you will. Oh, with Halloween right now, with properties like Creature, Commandos, Monsters are kind of popular and Horror is kind of popular right now. I, I was really expecting something else and it just missed on that. That's probably my fault more than anything. You shouldn't really go into a comic book shop with an expectation on a story. And there I am doing it. And that I got exactly what I deserved. So that one kind of missed for me this week. Next, um, this is where you thumbs down me. So Storm, number one, came out. This missed for me as well. Um, and I know, it's not because I, I don't like the character Storm. I actually love the character Storm. I think she's a fascinating character. But for somebody that can control the weather, all the Avengers all the x-men stuff that she has done everything kind of gets downloaded to you in here and then an introduction to a character and their power set as well because you can't just have one right where this miss for me is is at the end of the story you always start at the end <laughs> at the end of the story eternity kind of gives her these god powers right but she's kind of already a god wasn't she like you can control the weather you're a goddess Right? So I'm like, oh, so now it's like internal, planetary, beyond Earth. I don't know. I I don't know. That kind of missed for me. And then her whole run for a congressional seat, I'm like, that's just boring. Like, that's literally p politics in a comic book. Like, I can't think of anything more boring for a comic book fan than to read somebody's, like, how to get into Congress. And then, of course, the racisms get brought up. They have to. It's the X-Men. It's kind of their backbone in storytelling, right? The, the the people that see them is lesser because they're really afraid of them and their powers and stuff like that. So that was kind of brought up quite a bit in here as well. Regardless of how many people they say, there's always prejudice in people's hearts. Okay. Uh, you know what? I, I can agree with that. I can also agree with a super-powered being being so strong and me being scared that thing will rule me that I would probably want to fight against it too. This whole concept that we should just love these overpowered beings kind of misses me as racism and more as, well, just fear at the end of the day. Because I, I would be scared. And I'm aggressive when I'm scared. Like, I don't, I'm just saying, just throwing that out there. <laughs> All right, next. Ghost Rider, number one came out. This is Robbie Reyes. He's the one that drives the car. He's the Ghost Rider that drives the car. He doesn't ride a horse. Doesn't ride a motorcycle. This one drives a car. Hispanic character, so this is under the voices type of deal. Um, first appearance in there of Phantasmo. Kind of a generic character. Like, oh, I really was kind of hoping to get something out of that, and it just kind of fell short. What this story really hits on is a younger brother really missing his older brother. And that's kind of the whole story of Robbie Reyes, right? He's, he's doing this for his family. Um, and, of course, now he's sitting in hell. And it looks like he may be getting out of hell. So we, we get him back, right? But it seems like we're getting all the Ghost Rider backs throughout the Marvel Universe and some of the storylines that have come out in the last few weeks. So I just I don't want to see the character kind of get like, hey, he's coming back. And then, like, and he's, like, over here kind of doing a few small things. If you're going to highlight the character, then let's roll with this. Let's go down this path and let's see where it goes win, lose, or draw, you know, whatever the case may be. So I'm kind of, I kind of hope that doesn't happen. Because Robbie Reyes, even though he drives a car, is still a very interesting character and a different take on Ghost Rider that I do enjoy. All right, next, going into our independence. So we get the crow kind of came back out with a different origin story. And this is important because you can do that thing where it's like, it's not my crow, talking about the Brandon guy, right? Or the original comic book. But what most people kind of fail at is the character himself is not Crow. Right? He's he's just a host of something. And in this one, we kind of take this interesting story where 
we have our character, for namesake, we'll just call him the Crow. And uh, apparently, way back in the Western days, you know, he had a wife that was white, he was Native American, they had kids, and then some renegade cowboy types, you know, the racisms kind of hit and, and do horrible things. That probably happened more than it should have back in the past, I'm sure. Um, the problem with the story is it's so entrenched into the old school independent way of doing it that the black grayscale artwork in it can be a little muddled and confused on what's going on in there. Plus they jump time frames a lot, so it kinda you kinda get lost in there a little bit. Like, wait a second, I just see a mouth moving. Is this the cowboy or is this the modern day biker punk that's you know, doing the bad thing? So you kinda get lost in the art a little bit. But all in all, I did enjoy the story. I thought it was a good story. I think it's an interesting story. You know, that kind of repeat the, his, the sins of our past type of thing, right? So, yeah, I liked it for that aspect of it. Moving on. Crew Universe. So, this is interesting. I'm really, really digging this. This is issue three uh, of this particular uh, comic book series coming out. It's an anthology of horror stories, stories with a twist. Rather, it's monster, sci-fi, you know, ecliptical type mess. Um, this is probably one of my favorite ones out there. Yeah, you only get three stories out of it, but it looks like they're really kind of picking and choosing the stories that go in there. And this was really interesting. I like it because the great thing about these kind of books is they, yeah, they can kind of poke fun at society today or mannerisms of the modern man or woman, whatever the case may be. But... It's done in an entertaining enough way that it doesn't, like, offend people. It just kind of makes you think a little bit. And I, that's why I really enjoy Cruel Universe, and this issue delivered on that. It met my expectations. Not that anybody has to, but I'm happy it did. And last but not least, we get, yeah, we get Conan, Black of the, I'm sorry, Battle of the Blackstone. Um... This is fun because we're taking characters that have kind of been DC's properties for a while, like Black Angus, uh, uh, Solomon Kane, uh, Conway, th things like that. We're kind of meshing them all together, and we're playing with time travel in this to some degree. And they all meet a monster that can time travel and a ghost that kind of warns the whole deal, but I'm pretty sure he's our villain. Spoiler. I should say spoiler first. Let's just go. So... <laughs> With that said, we meet our monster, how powerful it is, and we kind of get an understanding of why they're all being brought together. Woo-woo magic. It's always woo-woo magic. And now we do the thing, right? Insert trope here, right? Now our trope here is two heroes meet. They don't understand what's going on. They see each other as an enemy. They got to fight. This happens with Solomon Kane and uh, Conan which I found interesting. Even though it's a predictable trope, it is still kind of cool to see it because now we understand, like, skill levels of people. Like, Solomon Cain's not somebody to be messed with. Don't get the... Don't confuse him with the religious guy that can't fight. <laughs> right? And then Conan being a man of somewhat religion himself. He does, you know, recognize Krom as his god, but he ain't here and all that here on Earth. He's going to have a problem with this guy. And I thought that was interesting, the way that they set that battle up and then I'm kind of curious how the more modern people from the 1930s are going to fit into this story with some obviously savage people around them why they try to do the 1939 sophisticated aristocrat types but they're carrying a gun <laughs> right be sophisticated carry a gun so that's my comic book haul and review for this week hey I had to make this one short I'm going to go hang out with my grandson so I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely let me know what you read. Uh, what did I miss this week? Was there something I should be reading? Definitely let me know. I'm just a comic book reader over here. So definitely. And uh, I'll see you all next week. Bye.